morning, everyone. Thank you very much. We will present this uh, with uh, Professor Hua. Let me just go full screen. So just to have a, a look at our COVID-19 activity in our hospital. So we are uh, around the 700 bed hospital, university hospital. We have the uh, infectious uh, medicine department here. So we were like the reference center for our region, for Strasbourg, for COVID-19 patients. So we began our activity in early March around the like, first patient, maybe around four or fifth. And then you see this is the number of uh, chest CT done for suspicion of COVID-19. And this is the number of positive chest CT. And you see that we progressively increased the number doing at the peak, so peak was end of March. We had about like 70 to 80 chest CT per day. And then lockdown, national lockdown was around like March 17. So about 15 days later, we began to see the effect of the lockdown and the number of chest CT of COVID-19 has decreased. What has decreased as well is the number of positive chest CT. So during the peak, we had about 60 to 70 percent of chest CT that were positive, and now we currently do around 20 to 30 chest CT for COVID-19 per day, but we have only 10, five to 10 per day. Uh, yes, you can see that uh, our hospital has been entirely reorganized uh, during uh, this. Uh, this uh, pandemic and uh, uh, you can see that almost all the beds in our hospital uh, has been uh, have been involved to COVID-19 uh, and you can see that all uh, beds uh, uh, intensive care unit and conventional beds have been reorganized and you can see that there is really an inflation it's coming a little bit after the peak uh, we observe on the uh, emergency unit because nowadays uh, the bed are full with patients and this is like a line because uh, patients are staying a long time uh, in uh, in the hospital of course and we have also entirely reorganized uh, the emergency unit you can see at the first part of the slides that uh, uh, our colleague and uh, urgentist, they have uh, uh, reorganized the, the, their unit by creating a, a kind of a lobby just at the entrance of the emergency unit to receive the patient uh, coming uh, from the, their home or coming from the ambulance. And uh, this uh, part uh, is called triage area, and the patient uh, who is arriving in this area uh, had a very quick uh, clinical examination and immediately a blood sample and a nasopharyngeal swab. And immediately after the, those two samples, he received a, a, a CT scanner, a non-injected CT scanner. Uh, most often a uh, low dose CT scanner. And after that, we are uh, performed the diagnosis uh, and the report immediately. And after that, uh, he, uh, the patient is, uh, 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 an, is, is going to a uh, post uh, medical advanced post with another clinic, uh, clinical examination. And the decision is, is done. Uh, some some patients are going to home because they are uh, moderately less or very uh, no um, uh, no really uh, disease or very mild disease and it, uh, when it's a severe disease they are going to uh, the admission unit in conventional hospitalization or uh, in the uh, emergency unit and what we have done is that the CT scanner was performed at the first step when the patient is arriving. And this is our result we have presented before. So we have, uh, uh, for this purpose, a dedicated CT scanner 
inside the emergency unit and during this period only uh, patients suspicious for COVID or having COVID uh, and around the uh, city on this place. It was a dedicated uh, management for this. And yeah, as you can see, uh, we had a cleaning and disinfection procedure and we received a, a, a large quantity of material for this. There was no problem, there was no problem for this, uh, with a very careful disinfection between each patient. Of course, it takes uh, 15 minutes, but it was necessary. So we were able to perform four uh, uh, CT uh, scanner per hour, but it was enough for uh, inpatient and for the emergency patient. And okay. of course we have uh, limited our outpatient activity. It was really a pity because some patients had a severe disease, for uh, example, uh, some oncologic patient, uh, even if we have maintained their, uh, their CT scanner, they were staying at home and I am sure that in the next, the, the next days and the next weeks we were receiving a patient with a, a very severe disease but anyway so we uh, have postponed many uh, patients except for oncologic patients but some oncologic patients were not, uh, have not realized their examinations, they were staying at home. Uh, this is our, our statistical uh, analysis. Uh, outpatients were only uh, during this period 25%, and inpatient coming with COVID, 75 patients. Uh, before the crisis, uh, it was 50 50. Uh, the quantity between in and out patients. Okay, so we tried to optimize our CT acquisition protocol since we were doing a lot of chest CT and that most of the patients were not that very old. We tried to lower the radiation dose. So uh, we uh, set up a very simple acquisition protocol for our technologist. Basically, if it was an ICU patient, we always do full dose to have the best image quality. But if it's not an ICU patient, then the techs have a visual evaluation of the patient, if he's fit or normal, or if he's obese. If he's fit normal and below 40, we just do a very low, so ultra low dose chest CT, DLP below 20. If he's above 40, DLP above 50. And if it's an obese patient, then below 40, we try not to go above 100 and above 40 then we go full dose and with this on our 2000 examination we had a mean DLP of 100 which is actually quite good and this is an example of the image quality we get so this was a young patient 35 years old a BMI about 33 and we managed to get DLP of 34 with very good image quality and even though it was only pure ground glass we were perfectly able to see it. So this is empirical, but I think it's working quite well. Uh, so all the uh, chest CT are reported uh, immediately, so less than 30 minutes before uh, having like the full report. We use a very, very simple report. So this is French, I'm sorry, but basically we're just saying if there are one glass opacities and or other consolidation. For the negative results, we limit ourselves to pleural occlusion, lymph nodes, and chest uh, lung nodules. And then we try to give an impression based in either of four categories. So either this is compatible with COVID-19, either this is infectious lesions, but that are not classical or typical for COVID-19. So COVID-19 is less uh, probable. Either these are non-infectious abnormalities, for example, lung cancer, pneumothorax, uh, 
uh, acute pulmonary edema or either chest CT is normal. And whenever we report a chest CT normal, we say that there are a risk of false negative, mostly in the three first day of the disease. So this is a very simple way to report, and that's why we were able to keep the the the, the speed of reporting very uh, very uh, very uh, efficiently. So we always use a visual analysis of the CT severity of the disease. It's based on the uh, ST paper. So we give one of five categories based on the evaluation of the whole lung parenchyma. And we feel that this is helping because either mild or moderate have usually the correct or good outcome, but importantly, during critical, are most likely to get uh, hospitalized. As described before, we also found a high incidence of P in COVID-19 patients. And uh, based on what we analyzed on our uh, first month of uh, patients, we recommend doing CTPA for all ICU patients. This is extremely frequent in ICU patients. So whenever an ICU patient has a chest CT that is required, or even an abdominal CT, we always do CTPA. And for other patients, we are doing when the edema levels are high. So we have a higher threshold for edema than for the, the usual regular patients, or when the clinical evolution is not satisfactory, or when there is a disproportion between almost normal lung parenchyma and the clinical status, which is worsening. We also had a lot of questions from the clinician about suspicion of co-infection. So they are, were always saying that I think my patient has another infection, so super infection. Uh, this is frequently suspected, but we found it to be probably quite rare. So we had some chest CT sign that could help, like for example, here in alveolar consolidation, some uh, bronchial, uh, bronchial uh, um, sign, uh, leaf nodes like this, or maybe limited uh, pleural effusion, but these are very weak signs. And to be honest, this is not something that uh, we found very frequently. So I think we should stay humble with the CT on this point. What uh, major problem that we are facing today is the evolution of these patients. So the main question from our clinician is, should we follow up this patient with chest CT? And to be honest, I think we have no definite answer to that. I have just some example to show you. So this patient was followed because he was enrolled in a clinical trial with an uh, imaging evaluation at uh, two weeks after the, uh, the enrollment. So this is an example of good evolution. The disease initially was only ground glass, mild disease, and at T14, we have almost like good resolution of the abnormalities. This patient was followed up because of clinical worsening, and we can see that the initial disease was a bit different, so mostly ground glass, but with some part of consolidation and some part of radiculations, maybe a bit of crazy paving here. And you see that the evolution here is very different. We have like an increasing of the ground glass and uh, appearing of some uh, fibrosis lesion with some bronchial ectasis and some uh, architectural distortion. So this is extremely different. And this patient, for example, also followed because of clinical trial. In the uh, initial CT scan, we had extensive, mostly pure ground glass opacities, maybe with a bit of crazy paving. And then uh, two weeks after, we have only like a reticular and a little bit uh, subfloral lesions with tiny bronchiectasis. So we have very different pattern of evolution. And the question is, should we have to follow this patient? Should we do it? And to be honest, we have no definite answer. Another patient here, so pure bone glass, at the initial CT, so patient had uh, two weeks of ICU stay and was discharged. And this is the chest CT follow up after six days after the discharge. And you see that we have like you know, the work consolidation with uh, uh, distortion. So very different uh, evolution here. So um, we feel that patient that had severe disease should get 
follow up chest CT, but we don't know when. Two weeks, four weeks, six weeks is most likely too early. So we try to do it, we will try to do it maybe around uh, three months, for example. But for the patient with uh, mild or moderate disease and good clinical evolution, most likely follow up won't be necessary, but it's not something certain. So that's our problem now. And the second problem now that we have is uh, we will most likely uh, end the lockdown in two or three weeks. And when the lockdown will end, should we do uh, screening with chest CT? So of course there are there is an uh, emphasis of screening of symptomatic patients with PCR, but should we screen patient as well with little to no symptoms with CT? This is uh, something that clinicians might want, but I'm not sure that this is something that can be useful. So these are our two questions currently.